Hello, it's Robert Barwick. This is a special event for CEC activists and those involved in the, uh, the Australia-wide campaign for a glass legal banking separation. I'm joined today by Alison Zerk, one of our activists from South Australia. Welcome, Alison. Thank you. Now, you've, been, you've been here for a week in our week of action on the Glass-Steagall campaign. Yeah, it's been amazing. I've um, really felt like I've contributed and I've learned a lot about how uh, hard you guys work behind oh, the scenes. We didn't pay you to say that, did we? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it's definitely from my own observation and it's been mind-blowing. Um, and also just like the intelligence um, that's flowing around this office, it's um, fabulous, it's so enriching. Oh, well, that's very nice of you to say that. We thought we'd have this chat with Alison because I know, I'll just speak from my standpoint now, you know, viewers would be familiar with my role. I spent a lot of time in Canberra interfacing with members of parliament on Glass-Steagall. I am convinced that it's it just like, um, who was it that said uh, it's 99% perspiration, 1% inspiration? Uh, it's 99, the, the success the CEC has had on this issue is 99% you, 99% you. The, the activists that actually do something that, that forces members of parliament and the, the political structures to pay attention. Yep. And so yep. and over the years, you get sometimes you get this cynicism that I'm really conscious of that people go, oh, nothing will ever change. And no. that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you don't do anything because you think nothing will change, well, for, for sure nothing will change. So I know this is important and Alison's here. Alison, you first came to our attention because you very amazingly posted a um, video on yeah. our Facebook page of your own connection to Glass-Steagall. Yes. And then from there, you've become more and more of an activist. So let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. uh, how, did, um, how did you get interested in this issue and come across the CEC? Um, I was also really, really interested in um, just the world politics because I wanted to know how the world functioned. Um, and uh, growing up with 9-11 uh, and then these yep. wars in um, the Middle East, I was thinking like, w how is this actually working as a machine? Um, and then um, my father, he uh, watches the news quite a lot. Um, and uh, he was watching the CEC and I uh, stumbled across it. And um, there were so many things that you guys were saying that really clicked. Um, and it was opening a world of um, facts and information that um, is so true that uh, m made me really want to um, learn more. And then I got the alert service and, and that was just amazing, you know. I was able to um, really get into the nitty gritty of it yeah, all right. and um, uh, yeah. Which is why we encourage people to you, you hear something we say, call in and ask for a copy of the alert service if you haven't had it before. You'll get the details in there. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's, uh, it's, it's um, yeah, it's better than um, consuming books because you get it all there in a yeah. quick, um, <laughs> <laughs> a quick, easy bite, and, um, and and it's on a broad range of subjects as well, which is uh, really, really cool. Um, and on Glass Dig, I think you, I think from your post you put on Facebook, you had your own experience with the financial system that made you wonder how could how could this happen, and then your Glass Steagall made sense to you. Yeah, um, you know, I knew that banks is just such a big machine, and you know, I could see that. Um, to have, for a member of pu the public to go up against the banks, yeah. um, you know, it's a pretty hard task. However, um, through f finding you guys, I actually felt like I could have a voice without just being a tick in a box. Um, and that actually really empowered me because I used to possibly be apathetic or... <laughs> You know, a little bit, um, you know, oh, what, what, what am I, little old yeah, me, yeah. Um, able to do? But it's only through this process that I, I've actually f felt empowered and been able to do something. And when you do something, um, you know, at least you know you've, you're moving forward in the right direction and you, you're doing something um, great. And this is really about the people, you know. Um, 
it's us like me that's going to um, I'm the one that's going to get all the problems from it all, you know. And if I'm not doing something and moving forward with this, you know, it's going to happen, you know. And at least I've done something. So what? Yeah, what? If I could interpret it, that, it, one way of saying expressing that is, you're not being a victim. No. Because right? we, we're all victims of the system, but you stop being a victim when you start doing something and you ditch that victim mentality. And so no. We're going to change this. Yeah, and um, in the process of actually getting a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my member of parliament, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, well, so tell us a bit more about. So you've done a few things now, and I remember if I can, off the top of my head, you've you, you made that post on Facebook where you appealed to people to get involved. That was really powerful, and we shared that. You you've also gone out and done some things on the street even before coming over here for this week of action and now you've had the week of action so and then you're going to go back and meet with your member of parliament so how, how have you felt how have you found um, yourself the process of getting out and actually doing things with the public oh really good you know um, I believe in the message I believe that the public needs to know about this I believe that not very many people do well not enough and it's only through people like me and the public doing something that um, enables everything to um, move on. What sort of response have you found you've been getting? Oh, um, really good. And with what I say, um, like that um, they're indebting our government, they're indebting us, um, that really sparks um, people's uh, ears up and their eyes light up because they agree with it. And, but they probably don't know that they have um, ability to do something and um, and just even watching you guys and being informed about what's happening here in Australian politics and also what's going on in the worldwide scheme of things, uh, you really feel like you, um, you know, you have a broader understanding and um, you feel empowered in that aspect. Well, we try and put a lot of, I mean, we, 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 we uh, put a lot of effort into our publications, into getting the information correct. Right? We want to. Ha we we have confidence in what we say. And we want. You're, I think you're expressing that. We want the, the viewers to have confidence in what we say. There's a lot of yeah. work, a lot of history. Our organisation's 30 years old in Australia now. We have an, an association that goes back even further with that with people in the United States, led by Lyndon LaRouche, and we've done a lot of you know history research ourselves. We know our subject. So we're confident when we say it, and if you feel that confidence, that's great because that's I, I, I want the viewers to feel that confidence as well. This you can rely on this information, get out and use it. We just have to recruit more numbers from the public to change things. Yeah, you've got to do something. You can't sit back um, because it's it's fine to have opinions and talk it, but you've got to do something. You've got to walk it, um, yeah. and th and that makes you feel. Um, you know, more encouraged about the situation. Um, yeah, yeah, and the history aspect is also very um, interesting to know because there's been amazing leaders from the past that have come f um, forward through history and done amazing stuff. Like Glass-Steagall, you know, that came mm. from um, uh, the history of what's happened in the past. Like, we, we can do the things from... Um, yep the past and do it again now. Well, and I also say in, in conclusion, it cuts both ways. Obviously, you're expressing the impact we've had on you. You've had an impact on us. Every every supporter does. You know, everyone has a unique story, but people that get involved in this, you bring that story to the table. That's inspiring for those of us who are full-time in the CC. We do do a lot of hard work without blowing our own horns, um, <laughs> but it's very inspiring to know that people are willing to, they see it and they go, yeah, you guys want, uh, uh, provide leadership that we want to get behind and that, that keeps us going as well. So anyway, Alison Zerk, thank you very much for coming to Melbourne <laughs> for the Week of Action. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us in this little uh, episode, mini episode of the CEC Report for Activists and um, we'll see you again very soon, hopefully. Yeah, most certainly. Yeah. Right, thanks, Alison. Thank you. If you would like to participate in the CEC's street activism, which is very important because we don't get the right media coverage for what we're doing. It's all self-generated effectively. But when you're out in the street with the public, 
no one can censor you, right? <laughs> so participate with us, it's very important wherever you are. We've got lots of CUC people around Australia doing things. Contact us on our toll-free number, 1-800-636-432. Send us an email, cec at cecos.com.au. We'll have someone speak to you and you can get involved.